Coming up, this local county park is making horseback riding accessible to everyone. Saddle up for horseback riding benefits and how to groom a noble steed. Riding horses isn't your thing? Well, how about a 146 foot yacht? Take a luxury tour through this big boat before the big game. We'll go over some football food favorites, some newer healthier options fit for fitness freaks at a local sports grill, and personal trainer Morgan Shapiro will keep you safe around a barbell when you're ready to burn off all the good eats. It's all today on SoFlow Health. If there's one thing we can agree on, it's that the game happening later on today is not associated with health. Well, maybe the athletes, but definitely not the food and drink. Hello and welcome to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and if I tried to turn the game which began in its current incarnation, January 15th of 1967, between the Green Bay Packers and Kansas City Chiefs in Los Angeles into a healthy food event, well, that would just be silly. We all really know that the day is about good food, good football, and beer. And what if I told you, though, that there's a place that's been challenging that trend since the 1980s? You can have yummy food that's also good for you, or at least won't make your doctor yell at you after the big game. That's why we're at Quarter Deck today, to show you some of the options that they have where you can enjoy some classics or try something new and maybe look out for your health a little bit. Either way, let's get inside because, after all, the game is just in a few hours. Well, Quarterdeck, it's, it's a really nice place to be, fun place to come and watch games and have fun with friends, in which you find a different atmosphere when you come. We do some really nice dishes. Also, we do burgers and uh, sandwiches and salads. Also, we do uh, sushi. It opens more the options for people. If they want to uh, eat burgers or barbecue or look comfort, Always on the group, it's always a friend that wants to eat sushi or some Asian style, so we have it. But well, today we'll be trying uh, the burgers. We got uh, one that's called the All American or the Grander. That's one of the two big sellers. Also, we'll be making the barbecue ribs, uh, rice, let's roll, a uh, couple salads uh, for the people that uh, want to stay on the healthy side, and some rice, uh, sushi. As you can see, we've got a lot of food already, mostly on the healthier side, but don't worry, we've got those traditional favorites that make your mouth water on the way, but I have to say, this looks pretty good too. Now, before we get into this, we're gonna head over to Jenna with GBG Travel. She's on a yacht fit for a champion. SoFlo Health's Healthy Travels, sponsored by GBG Travel. Hey everyone, I'm Jenna Mark on board the Big Easy and what a beautiful day we are having here with International Yacht Company, better known as IYC here in South Florida. And they have the biggest fleet of yachts in the world. Let's go check it out. Hi Heather, how are you? Hi Jenna, good to see you. Thank you so much for having us on board the Big Easy. You're welcome. So are you ready to give us a tour and show off this beautiful boat? Absolutely. We're here on the sun deck, which you can see is a very expansive space. We have a jacuzzi and surrounding sun pads. The boat accommodates 12 guests. So we have seating for 12 here. The nice thing about this table is it can also be made smaller by taking out the leafs if you have a smaller group and it gives you more space on the sun deck. Well, I could spend all day up here, but I know there's so much more of this beautiful boat, so can we go see it? Absolutely. Come on, follow us. Let's go. All right, Heather, so this is the Sky Lounge? This is the Sky Lounge. We're on the upper deck, just aft of the bridge. This is a really intimate room where the guests can come to enjoy a cocktail, watch TV, play cards. It's a really nice gathering space. I mean, it's so cozy and it feels like home. How big is this boat? Because it is pretty big. The boat is 146 feet. She has six staterooms, so she sleeps 12 guests. The yacht was built in 2002 and refit in 2021. She was built at the Hawkport Shipyard in Holland. Before we go see more of the beautiful parts of this yacht, how about some fun? I mean, anyone want to drive a yacht somewhere? Let's go. So, where are we now? We're on the main deck of a vessel. So we're standing in the formal dining where we can seat 12 guests, which is a really nice gathering place. Although most people prefer to eat outside when they're on charter. Also, we have the main salon area, which is a 
wonderful place for the guests to gather with their family or their friends. And as you can see, this boat is very family friendly. It is a very warm, inviting interior and kind of feels like you're sitting in your living room of your house. So what else is left? So I'd like to introduce you to the chief stewardess who can give you a better idea of what it's like to be on board during charter. It's different to having your everyday holiday where you have to share with other people because on board you're sort of on your own, you're with a bunch of people that you prefer to be with and I think the food, definitely, definitely the food, it makes a big, big, big difference and we have a lot of water toys for this particular boat, uh, we have pretty much everything. It's been a wonderful day on board the Big Easy. Thank you to IYC for having us. Hunter, I don't know what your plans are the rest of the day, but I know what mine are. SoFlo Health's Healthy Travels, sponsored by GBG Travel. A is for horses, this is for us, and barbells are for Morgan when SoFlo Health returns. Focusing on you, innovations in modern medicine, from your team of experts at UHealth, the University of Miami Health System. Juan Casada was born with a heart defect that caused an aortic aneurysm. In 2013, world-renowned cardiac surgeon Dr. Joseph Lamellas used a minimally invasive procedure to fix this life-threatening condition. We knew that at one point my aortic valve needed to be replaced. When Juan started having shortness of breath nine years later, he knew exactly where to go, to Dr. Lamellis at UHealth. The first time I did his operation, I replaced the ACE and aorta through a minimally invasive approach. And then he needed a reoperation for his aortic valve, so I did the operation through the same exact minimally invasive approach to replace the aortic valve. Doctor, your minimally invasive techniques are better for a patient's recovery, but this is still a big surgery, right? Psychologically, they progress a lot quicker because they don't feel that they've had a, a, a big operation, which in fact, they did have a big operation, but it was done with techniques that are lesser invasive. Juan had his surgery on January 10th and was home in less than a week. He says never ignore symptoms, and if you need heart surgery, there's only one answer. Dr. Lamellas, he's the only one. He's the only one for me. You thought I'd be eating the salad, didn't you? Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. We're at Quarter Deck for the big game to talk about all of this delicious food, traditional, less healthy, and some of the newer, more healthy options. But before we get into this, there's still some more SoFlo Health that you need to watch. So go ahead and watch this. This is Alex, and Alex, who is with us? This is Ranger. He's one of our trail horses here at Tradewinds. How are you doing, Ranger? Seems like he's pretty relaxed. <laughs> so tell us, uh, first of all, what do you do here at Tradewinds Park and um, what are we doing here today? We are an educational farm that's a part of the county park system and we offer trail rides, um, horseback riding lessons, summer camps, school field trips, and educational farm tours as well as pony rides. You know, from your perspective, what's so great about being around horses? Um, horses are incredible animals. They are powerful, they're intelligent, um, and they definitely test you every day. And they're a true <laughs> reflection of, you know, how good you are to them when you're working with them. Uh, it's also very you know, calming in the South Florida environment where it's sure. so urban here to be out in such a nice area. And right. All right. Well, I won't make Ranger wait any longer. What do we need to do to groom him? So each horse has their own personal grooming box that we use okay. um, so that we don't have to worry about any skin issues being contaminated from one horse to another. Mm -hmm. So with our curry comb, we go in small circles to break up any loose dirt or mud that could be caked on them from their night in the pasture. And we do essentially their whole bodies with it. We want to stay away from any areas that um, are particularly bony, like their knees, unless sure. we have to. And if we do do that area, do it very gently. Once we do that, we use a hard brush. And we use that to flick away any dirt that would be on their body. And then we would use our soft brush as a polishing brush, essentially. So nice. to just smooth their coat over. So if you want to use the curry comb, you're welcome sure. to. Sure. Just slide so your hand Sure. So use this side here? Yep, that's fine. 
And then just circles mm -hmm. gently. Yes. Look at that. So the idea is that the grooming process is to keep them clean, but it's also to you know give them a little love and care as well. Correct, correct. They enjoy it. You know, it feels like a massage for them. It's a good bonding exercise as well for them with their riders and their caretakers. Got a saddle in hand. We're ready to tack them up. Okay. What's so next? every horse has a saddle pad or a combination of saddle pads that they wear underneath the saddle to protect them. And then we take the saddle and we want to gather up everything that's on the far side and move it out of the way for when we put the horse, the saddle on the horse. And we want to lower it gently onto his back and then make sure everything is flat. All right, well, that's that for now. Make sure that you keep watching SoFlo Health because Alex is going to get me on Ranger, right? Yes. All right, well, I'm looking forward to that. We'll see you after you watch this. I'm not quite sure how much caloric intake is right here on the table with me, but I can tell you that the average American puts down about 2,400 calories in the four to five hours that the big game is on. Now, if you eat that much, you'll definitely want to burn it off. And how do you do that? With Morgan Shapiro. Morgan Shapiro here, back with some do's and don'ts in the gym. And today we may be doing my favorite exercise, which is the deadlift. Today we are going to go over the sumo deadlift, a phenomenal exercise, but sadly oftentimes done wrong and that's just because people don't know proper form. So we are going to start off with the don'ts, what I do not want you to do and what I often see in the gym. So oftentimes people start super narrow stance, which is not what the sumo is supposed to be. Maybe they do a very narrow grip, they're looking at themselves in the mirror arching that back, arching the neck, arch back or round back, and then they go to pick up the bar, which oftentimes is very far away from them. And you can imagine what's gonna happen. If you pick it up from here, you're gonna be pulling it all from your low back. Honestly, the setup is so dangerous, I am not even going to pick it up because you are putting yourself at such risk of injury. So now I'm gonna really break it down and show you guys what I do want you to do. So we are going to roll the bar back. We're going to start off in a wide stance, toes faced out. As you can see, I got a lot closer to the bar. I want you to give me a grip about shoulder width apart. Oftentimes, it helps if you look at these lines on the bar. That's often a good indication of where you need to grip. Here, we bend. Now, my shins are pretty much on top of that bar, very, very close. Neck is looking forward, flat in line with the spine, flat back. We're going to squeeze the lats, squeeze the core, keeping everything flat, and we are lifting, coming up at the top, slow, lower down, and lift, come up, slow, lower down. Now when you come up, oftentimes trainers or good friends who are with you in the gym will say, squeeze your glutes at the top. Yes, you want to squeeze your glutes at the top, but not so much so that you arch your back and bring it forward. So really work to find that happy medium. These little details make a huge difference when it comes to proper form and execution. Now speaking of little details, let's go over properly setting up the bar because these little details also make a huge difference. So I want you to be aware to make sure your clip is pressed all the way against the plate. You don't want it out here and you also don't want one plate not all the way pressed against the bar. You can imagine what's gonna happen if you go to pick up that bar and one plate is not all the way in, you're gonna feel a little bit uneven. So make sure you press that plate all the way in, gripping that clip all the way to the plates, and then you are ready to safely do the wonderful sumo deadlift. Thank you guys for watching. Get in the gym, pick some stuff up, and put it down. How many times would you have to sprint a football field to burn off all of this food? Find out the answer and how to ride a horse after the break on SoFlo Health. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and of course, it's game day, but it's also the day that we consume a lot of food. 
In case you're just joining us, we've been hanging out at Quarter Deck for the big game because it's a place where you're able to get your traditional bar food that you would be eating on game day anyway, but you're also able to get some other options that they've been adding as well. We've seen throughout the growth of SoFlo Health that many establishments have been adding healthier options because you have been wanting it, and now you've got it. But the question is, what do I do with all this food? The answer is, I'm going to eat it, of course. Well, not all of it, because that would be absurd. But on SoFlo Health, we've talked to you about being able to enjoy your food and just knowing what you're eating. People like to categorize food as healthy and unhealthy food often. But the fact is, it's just food. It's still calories, it's still micronutrients. It's a matter of what went into the process. We've always encouraged you eating whole foods at home that you make yourself, but of course, you're a human being that's gonna to wanna to enjoy themselves, so you're gonna head out as well. So being able to say, all right, well, I really want to enjoy this burger, but I'd like to make the calories a little bit lighter on me. Well, maybe you don't get the bacon and the cheese. If you want that for the taste, of course, get it and enjoy it. But that's where a lot of fat is gonna come from, where you have more calories per gram of fat than you do in, say, a carbohydrate or in a meat. When it comes to these rolls, they might be a lot easier on your body if you're somebody that doesn't digest fat as well, or if you wanna keep lower on the carbohydrates because that is available to you here. But something I bet you wouldn't expect is some higher sodium content. If there's soy sauce on something, that's a lot of sodium. So that doesn't mean that you shouldn't eat it, it just means be aware of that because if keeping low salt is one of your goals, then maybe that's not the option you'd pick. Maybe you go for something more like the Poke Bowl over here, which is a great, well-balanced meal that we've seen <laughs> so many times here on SoFlo Health, but we're happy to have it as an option at a place where normally we might not be able to. Let's talk calories for a second for those of you that are concerned about that. I don't know the particular calorie content of what's on the table with me. I'm sure you could find out, but I can tell you that the average poke bowl is about 500 to 700 calories. And the average bacon cheeseburger without the side is about mm, 780 to 1,000 calories from what I've been able to research. And that's a stark contrast, certainly. But we'll go on the conservative side and say that they're maybe a little bit lower than our estimates. And if you think about it, that few hundred calorie difference is basically a small bag of potato chips. So if you're doing it just for the caloric intake, you might as well pick whichever one you'd rather have to enjoy for the meal and the taste than the calories at that point. Stick with me for some silly football math. The average athlete can sprint at about 15 miles per hour, which would cover a football field in about 14 seconds and burn about 22 calories. So give or take 10 sprints of a football field is about 200 calories burned, and that was actually done in a real study. So what about the food that we eat then? Well, theoretically, you could eat this poke bowl, which is about five to 600 calories, and burn it off in 30 sprints of a football field in intervals. And if you ate a burger like this one with the sides that maybe totaled you up to about 1,200 calories with your drink and whatever else that you're having, then you would have to do double the work, which would mean about 60 sprints of a football field in intervals. Now, am I saying to go do this right after you eat on Sunday? No, definitely not. If you're wondering how I got to that conclusion, there's a Colorado State University where some researchers figured out that if you sprint in intervals totaling two and a half minutes, you can burn about 200 calories. And that's where we got all that information from. Now, I'm going to pick some food out here to try, but while I do that, listen in to the chef to find out what it's like here on game day. Well, game day, you gotta make sure if you guys come in here, you, gotta, you guys gotta be early because we're known for those days, screams. Make sure you got your price spot. We're here, we, we had a nice uh, outdoor patio inside, and uh, we have the two for one also promotion going. Uh, sometimes we just, uh, we came up with a nice special. So we have a win day, a beer day, just for these people who really know us for game days. So they'll come. Burgers, chicken wings, sushi, salads, for pretty much I can say we try to have it all. Thanks, Jonathan. We've done plenty of talking about the food today, so I'm just gonna taste it and we're gonna move on with some SoFlo health. Choosing the poke bowl because of course I would. Go ahead, roll your eyes all you want. Looks delicious. Let's see how it tastes. Try and get a little bit of everything there. Here we go. Now it's my favorite part where I get to actually ride Ranger. All right, so what do I do here? You're gonna swing your leg over and sit down gently on mm -hmm. the saddle. Interaction with horses has been known to have therapeutic benefits for many types of mental maladies, from kids with ADD to veterans with PTSD. 
But the mental health benefits can be enjoyed by everyone because horseback riding allows you to take a break from life's stressors and experience the fresh air. Spending time with horses releases a hormone called serotonin, which can improve your mood and reduce your stress levels. Along with its mental benefits, horseback riding also serves as a form of exercise. Not only are you burning calories through regular movement, but you're also performing an isometric exercise by using your muscles to stabilize yourself on the horse. This improves your core strength, balance of coordination, and even increases muscle tone and overall strength. There is not a muscle horseback riding doesn't strengthen. Outside from core muscles, for example, riding engages your chest, arms, and legs. After all, these work together to keep you from falling. And there's no need to worry about lack of experience. Places like Tradewinds Park and Stables cater to all skill levels, from beginners to experts. Taking a break from all the food at Quarter Deck, I've been wondering about owls, specifically superb owl facts. And it's been said that owls can turn their heads 360 degrees around. Is this true? You can find out when SoFlo Health returns. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. We're still here at Quarter Deck. And before the break, I asked you if it was true that owls can turn their heads 360 degrees. Well, unfortunately for owls and for our fun facts, it is not true. They can move their heads 135 degrees in either direction, giving them 270 degrees in total movement. And scientists say that it's because of special adaptations that they're able to do this. Just like the special menu adaptations they've made here so that anybody can enjoy the big game, whether they want to eat on the healthier side or the more traditional side. I'll leave that decision up to you. That's all we have for this week's episode of SoFlo Health. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that you enjoy the game later today and you make some healthy decisions at some point, whether it's today or another day. Again, I'll leave that up to you. As always, you can watch previous episodes of SoFlo Health on SoFloHealth.com. You can follow us using at SoFlo Health to share with us what you're doing to stay healthy. And until next week, it's goodbye, good health, and for me, good eats. Next week on SoFlo Health, we visit a nearly 200-year-old lighthouse, meet an herbalist making healthy elixirs, and head back into the gym with Morgan. Come back next Sunday for more SoFlo Health. We'll see you then.